Hey everyone, so I'm finally going to give a tour of my bookshelf, so let's start at the top and work our way down. Let's go. Okay, and starting off with the first book on my shelf is the first book in Isaac Asimov's Foundation Trilogy, titled Foundation. I thought this book was pretty good, but it wasn't until the second book, Foundation and Empire, when I really started to enjoy this series. The final book in the trilogy is Second Foundation. This book was also fantastic, much better than the first book, but probably not as good as the second book. Next, we have a very rough copy of Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, an absolute classic. Following Fahrenheit 451, we have Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles, another classic. Then we have The Mists of Avalon by Miriam Zimmer Bradley. I don't really know why I'm keeping this book, because honestly, I didn't really enjoy it that much. But I still have it. Next is World War Z by Max Brooks. An absolutely fantastic zombie book, in my opinion. And also, The Zombie Survival Guide, also by Max Brooks. I really enjoyed this book as well. It's definitely not a serious book, but it is very entertaining in its own right. And next, we have Orson Scott Card's Ender's Game. Another classic science fiction book. And one that I really enjoyed. And continuing with classic science fiction, we have Arthur C. Clarke's Childhood's End. Not a science fiction book I have enjoyed as other series, but still pretty good. And now we're getting into some books that I have yet to read, but do plan on reading at some point, hopefully the not too distant future. The first one we have is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, and Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. And then a book I have yet to finish reading is Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. And then next we have The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I absolutely love this book. It makes me want to read other Sherlock Holmes stories. Then we have The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This was one of my favorite books back in high school that they made you read. I really enjoyed this story. Next, we have Anne Frank's Diary. I have yet to read this book, but I do plan on getting around to it, hopefully pretty soon. And then we have Lord of the Flies by William Golding, another classic. And then another classic book we have is The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I still need to read this book, though. And next we have arguably one of my favorite books ever is, of course, Dune by Frank Herbert. Amazing book. And its sequel, Dune Messiah, which is pretty good. And the next book in this series, Children of Dune, which I really enjoyed. And the fourth book in the series, God Emperor of Dune. I still need to read this one. It's been sitting on my bookshelf for kind of a while now. Now we're going to start getting into Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time series, starting off with the first book, which is The Eye of the World. I absolutely love this series. First book is okay. Definitely improves in the later books, in my opinion. And the second book in the series is The Great Hunt. Again, a pretty good book, but definitely not as good as the later books in the series. Also, it really bothers me how the first book doesn't match the next books that I have in the series. I'll probably have to replace the first book so it matches. Just part of my OCD. And the third book in the series is The Dragon Reborn. I really enjoyed this book. Continuing with the Wheel of Time series, we have The Shadow Rising. This is one of the best books in the series, in my opinion. Also, yes, it does bother me how the series starts on one shelf and then continues on the next shelf. However, I am limited on the space that I have. I'll probably need to get a bigger bookshelf. And then the fifth book in the Wheel of Time series is The Fires of Heaven. Another great book. And the sixth book in the Wheel of Time series is my favorite one so far that I've read, which is The Lord of Chaos. An absolutely amazing book. And book seven is A Crown of Swords. I still need to read this one. Then book eight, which is The Path of Daggers. Again, still need to read this one as well. And then we're going to randomly jump to book 13, Towers of Midnight. I got this book at Goodwill for a really good price, like 50 cents, so I just picked it up. Because I know at some point I do want to have the entire series and read through the entire series. And that's all we have for the Wheel of Time series. The next book that I have on my shelf is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. Or Casey. Not sure how to pronounce his last name. This is another classic book and one that I really enjoyed. 
And now we have another classic book, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. This is arguably one of my favorite books along with Dune. I absolutely love this book. And then the other Harper Lee book is Go Set a Watchman, which is a sequel, or at least a sort of sequel to A Kill a Mockingbird. This book is fine, but definitely not as good as To Kill a Mockingbird. Now we're going to be getting into some George R. R. Martin. The first book that I have is Fire and Blood. I actually just recently finished reading this book, and I thought it was okay. Definitely not as good as his Ice and Fire series, but pretty good in its own right. And then the first book in A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin is A Game of Thrones. An absolutely fantastic book. And then its sequel, A Clash of Kings, again, an amazing book. And the third book in the series, A Storm of Swords, again, amazing book. Then the fourth book in the series is A Feast for Crows. Very much a disappointing book. Not terrible, but definitely not as good as the first three. And then the fifth and most recent A Song of Ice and Fire book is A Dance with Dragons. Definitely an improvement over the fourth book, but not as good as the first three in my opinion. Still pretty good though. And the final George R. R. Martin book I have is A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. I don't really know why these short stories get so much hate. I really enjoyed this book. Of course, it's not as good as his Song of Ice and Fire series, but still good. And now we are on the third shelf, starting off with... 1984 by George Orwell. Another one of my favorite books I've ever read, along with Dune and To Kill a Mockingbird. An absolutely amazing book. And another Orwell book is Animal Farm. Another classic and another book that I really enjoyed. Next we have Howard Pyle's The Story of King Arthur and His Knights. I haven't read this book yet. The Mists of Avalon kind of turned me off from reading Arthurian legend books, at least for a little while. And next we have The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This book has been sitting on my shelf for years, probably at least five or six years, or maybe even longer. I don't know when I'm going to get around to reading this book, but hopefully by the time I read this book and its sequel, hopefully book three will be out. Hopefully. And next we have Contact by Carl Sagan. I absolutely loved this book. It's very different from other science fiction books because the way it's written is very, very realistic. Which makes perfect sense coming from Carl Sagan. He's one of my absolute favorite writers, normally for his non-fiction astronomy related books, but this book was also fantastic. And another classic that we have is J.D. Salinger's The Catcher in the Rye. I ended up reading this book pretty recently. I also read it back in high school, but had no memory of it. I thought it was okay, but definitely not as good as the other classic books I've read recently. And next we have the first book in the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson. This was the first Sanderson book I've ever read, and I went into this book with my expectations probably a little too high, which hampered my enjoyment of this book. I thought it was definitely fine, a pretty good book, but since I was expecting something on an entirely different level, I was definitely a little disappointed by it. It's still okay though, in my opinion. And the next book that I have is Tress of the Emerald Sea, also by Brandon Sanderson. This was his first book in his secret novel collection. I definitely enjoyed this book and honestly enjoyed it a lot more than Mistborn. This is the second Brandon Sanderson book I've read. Now we're gonna be getting into the Witcher series by Andrzej Sapkowski. This is the first book, which is a collection of short stories by Sapkowski, which is titled The Last Wish. I absolutely love this series, but the first books I thought were only okay. It isn't until the later books in the series that I really started to enjoy it. Next is Sword of Destiny. Again, just like The Last Wish, this is a collection of short stories. And a pretty good book. Next we have Blood of Elves, which is kinda considered the first book in the Witcher series. At least one of the first main books in the series. This, in my opinion, is when the book started to really improve and when I really started to get into the series. And the next book in the series is The Time of Contempt. Again, the series just tends to improve after each book. And next in the series, we have Baptism of Fire. Again, a fantastic book. And next, we have The Tower of Swallows. And again, another fantastic book in the series. Then next we have The Lady of the Lake. This is kind of considered the final part of the series, although there is another book. This book is pretty good, but not as good as the other prior couple books. 
And the final Witcher book that we have is Season of Storms. This book is okay, but I definitely found it to be a little disappointing. Following the Witcher series, we have Dead Boy's Game and The Broken Vow by A. David Singh. This is one of the biggest surprises I had last year reading this book. I went in thinking it would be an okay book, but considering how much I enjoyed this book, it really took me by surprise. Next, we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, another classic book and another book I absolutely love. And following that, we have Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Another classic, another great book. Following that, we have Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. Again, another classic and another book that I really enjoyed. Now we're going to get into some J.R.R. Tolkien. I have The Silmarillion. Of course, this is a classic and a book that I absolutely enjoyed, but a book I probably need to read a couple times to really grasp everything that's told in it. But still fantastic. And next we have The Hobbit by Tolkien, another fantastic book, and I can't wait until my kids are a little bit older so I can read this to them. I hope they enjoy it as much as I do. And next, of course, we have The Lord of the Rings by Tolkien. I absolutely hate this book. Just kidding. Of course, I love this book. It's fantastic. Who can't love it? Following Tolkien, we have a couple of H.G. Wells books. The first one I have is The Time Machine. I absolutely love this book. And then The War of the Worlds. Again, another classic science fiction book that I love. And the final book that we have on this shelf is The Pictures of Dorian Gray and Other Writings by Oscar Wilde. I haven't read this book yet, but definitely want to since it is a classic. And moving on to the fourth shelf, this shelf is definitely a little bit different. It includes some young adult and or children's books, as well as some of my wife's books. Starting off, of course, being a millennial, I have the Harry Potter series, so the first book in that is, of course, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And the next book in the series is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. The third book is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Fourth book is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. The fifth book is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. The sixth book is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. And the last book is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. I really want to read through this series again since I haven't read through it in like 20 plus years. Of course, I remember enjoying the series a ton when I was a kid, so it'd be really interesting to read through it again and see how much I enjoy it now. Next book we have is Merlin, Book 1, The Lost Years. I have no idea what this is. I've never read it and I've never even heard of it, but maybe my kids will like it when they get older. Who knows? And next, we have Susan Collins' The Hunger Games series. The first book is, of course, The Hunger Games. I really enjoyed this series. I read it more recently, like probably in the last five years, but I thought it was pretty good. And the second book in the series is Catching Fire. Again, I thought it was pretty good. And the third book in the series is Mockingjay. Again, just like the first two, another pretty good book. Next, we have Ursula K. Le Guin's Earthsea series. The first book is A Wizard of Earthsea. I haven't read any of these books before, but I'm keeping it because maybe my kids will like it when they get older. And the next book we have, which is a book I really cherish from my childhood, is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline LaEngle. This book, strictly from a nostalgia point of view, is probably my favorite book and one of the most influential books I've ever read in my life because this book is what got me into reading fantasy and science fiction. An absolutely amazing book. Next, we have The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton, another book that I enjoyed in my childhood. Hopefully my kids like this book when they get older, too. And next, we have some random Star Wars book, The Clone Wars, The New Padawan. I don't know, keeping that for my kids. And then the next couple books we have is My Father's Dragon, Elmer and the Dragon, and The Dragons of Blue Land, all by Ruth Stiles Gannett. These were probably the first books that I read on my own as a very, very young child, and I remember being so proud when I read through these books because I consider them actual books, not just picture stories. So they definitely have a place in my heart, and hopefully my kids can enjoy reading them when they get a little bit older too. Next, we have Charlotte's Web by E.B. White, another classic children's story. And following that, we have The Wish Giver by Bill Britton. I remember loving this book when I was a child. And now to kind of change things up a little bit, we're getting into some of my wife's books. First couple things we have on this shelf is Muru Puri. 
I don't know, this is manga that my wife reads. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> Next, we have some Avatar books. The first one we have is The Rise of Kyoshi. I actually read this book too, and I thought it was pretty good. And then its sequel, The Shadow of Kyoshi. Again, I thought this book was pretty good. And also The Dawn of Yang Chen. I haven't read this one yet, but hopefully it's as good as the other two. I don't know. And then my wife also has all of these Avatar graphic novel books. I haven't read any of them, and I really don't feel like pulling every single one of these out since there are a lot of them, but I think this is pretty much all of them that have been released so far. She loves Avatar, can you tell? And now, here we are on the final shelf, which is again a little bit different. Starting off with some astronomy books, we have An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth by Colonel Chris Hadfield. This book is by a Canadian astronaut, and a book I absolutely loved reading. I thought it was fascinating. Next, we have Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time, another book I really enjoyed, and a book that honestly I think a lot of people should read. It's really enlightening. And another Stephen Hawking book is The Grand Design. I still need to read this one, though. And the final Stephen Hawking book I have is The Universe in a Nutshell. Again, I still need to read this one, too. Next, we have Cosmos by Carl Sagan. Absolutely amazing. Everyone needs to read it, even though it is a little outdated. Still fascinating, and Carl Sagan is one of the greatest writers, in my opinion, especially in regards to astronomy. Next, we have Carl Sagan, Science as a Candle in the Dark, The Demon Haunted World. Again, another fantastic book that I think people should read. I thought it was fascinating. Really, really great. Can't recommend it enough. Next, we have a very old book that I do not have the dust jacket to, but this is The Dragons of Eden, also by Carl Sagan. This is a book I still need to read. It's been sitting on my shelf for a very long time. And the final Carl Sagan book that I have is Pale Blue Dot, A Vision of the Human Future in Space. Again, an absolutely fantastic book and a book that I think everyone should read at some point. Next, we have Star Talk by Neil deGrasse Tyson. I thought this book was pretty good. Definitely not as good as the other astronomy books that I have. This one's definitely an easier read than the other ones. Next, we have a Bill Nye book, which is undeniable, Evolution and the Science of Creation. I thought this book was okay. Next, we have a book by Andrew Yang. This is The War on Normal People. I thought this book was pretty fascinating and definitely enjoyed reading it too. These next three books that I have are actually from my years in college. I just kind of kept on to them because I thought they were really interesting reads from college. But first we have The Accidental Mind by David J. Linden. Then we have Thomas L. Friedman's The World is Flat. And finally we have Mark Lilla, which is The Stillborn God. All pretty interesting books that I thought were definitely fascinating. That's why I kept hold of them. And now we're going to be getting into a couple more of my wife's books. So this is The American Revolution. And then we have Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow. Haven't read this. I also have The Atlas Obscura. This is kind of a random book that shows you all these cool, different, neat things to see in various states within the country. It's kind of interesting. Next, we have Complete National Parks of the United States. This is, again, my wife's book. Then we have some book on Japan. I really want to go to Japan at some point in the future. Then we have a book on Germany called The Rhine, Guide from Mainz to Cologne. And another one of my wife's books is Yorktown, Reflections on the Past. And finally, the last books we have are a couple of religious books. So we have the Quran, which I've read, the Bible, which I have not read, my wife's Bible, Stories of Padre Pio, now he's Saint Pio, I've read that, and The Book of Mormon, which I have also read. And I almost forgot, I have a couple more books that I'm currently reading through, so they're not on my bookshelf. First, we have Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson, and also another Sherlock Holmes book, this is A Study in Scarlet. But yeah, those are all my books that I own. Let me know if you have any comments down below, or if you think any books I should buy or series that I'm missing. Let me know as well. Thanks for watching.